Oh, thank you. I apologize for this. So I just wanted to uh, stress some point. The first is that uh, robotic surgery, as you know, is uh, the latest evolution of minimal invasive surgery. So this means that uh, the, the robotic surgery is a not a new operation, but just an advanced technology to hide the surgical procedure uh, in minimal invasive surgery. If we look uh, in the history, we find that uh, the robotic surgery, the, the, the um, surgical application uh, is almost, uh, uh, has been applied almost recently. So the first, uh, there is the pointed, but anyway. Um, the first, uh, uh, the, the, the first surgical robot was uh, developed in 1983 and uh, the first uh, uh, approved by the FDA was in 1992, but uh, the current concept of robotic surgery, the master slave telemanipulator was developed at the mid of the 90s. In that time, there were two different systems, the Zeus, which was developed in uh, Europe, and the Da Vinci in the US. Unfortunately, after a few years, the Zeus was uh, completely incorporated uh, by the intuitive company. So today we have uh, the monopoly of uh, the Da Vinci, unfortunately, for the cost, as you know, you well know. Um, in that time, um, the system was um, uh, FDA cleared uh, uh, immediately after, on 2000. And uh, um, of course, uh, the the focus was to overcome some uh, uh, technical minimally uh, uh, limitation, minimal invasive limitation that we can meet during a normal, a conventional uh, minimal invasive surgery. So uh, some upgrades were developed over the years. The first in 2003, which was uh, the first major upgrade with the fourth arm the last, last year with the Da Vinci XI, which was the fourth generation um, since the first, uh, which was the standard Da Vinci system. Uh, it is clear that uh, uh, we can have uh, the light a little bit uh, uh, decrease, we can decrease a little bit. Uh, this is implies a, a new concept of uh, OR. As you can see, the surgeon sits at the console moving a joystick, which uh, and the movements are translated uh, thanks to the very sophisticated uh, uh, software to the arms of the, uh, of the system, which are connected to the cannulas and, through, and, and then the very nice articulated instrument. This is, uh, is very clearly how the movement mimic in some way the wrist of the human hands. In this slide are listed some features that we will know. Um, I try to list it, the very important features. Uh, the three-dimensional vision, uh, which implies depth perception. The magnified imaging, which means at 10 times the normal vision, seven degree of freedom, which uh, implies a greater range of motion than those possible with the human hand. And especially the downscaling. The downscaling is a very nice, very important feature, which means that we uh, have uh, the, the, the movement of a surgeon uh, can be transduced of, or in a finer ones in the instruments. In other words, we can have a, uh, a very precise movement inside, in the chest of cavity or in abdominal cavity. And finally, the tremor filtration is another important feature of this system. This, of course, implies some technical and clinical advantages which uh, influence a better precision, greater maneuverability, and surgical dexterity, which allows to perform a complex procedure in a safer way. In, in the world, we have more than 3,000 platforms. In the UK, I see 47. And this is uh, the thoracic robotic, robotic activity in Europe. We have more than 32 centers. 
which started with uh, the robotic uh, uh, with the robotic program. Not all surgeons started it with high volume, but they in some way try to apply this uh, this uh, new technology. What about the indications? The FDA cleared for all cardiothoracic surgery, including major lung resections and the mediastinum, mediastinum procedures. The robotic thymectomies, we can consider the gold standard for this, uh, for this indication. Uh, more than 4,000 thymectomies uh, have been performed in the world. Uh, the very uh, important group is, uh, in, uh, is uh, the group uh, in Berlin, which is uh, very probably is uh, the, uh, I, the, higher group, the higher number of uh, thymectomies. And also the results, so when we look at the literature, we find a very good results uh, if we see, this is a, the publication uh, on uh, thoracic cardiovascular surgery, as you can see, the cumulative complete remission rate on myasthenic patients uh, uh, shows a, a very, very good result with a 39.25% uh, uh, after a follow-up of 42 months. And this was significantly improved compared with the thoracoscopic series, which was 20.3%. 20, 20 and again, when we look at, at um, early staging for thymomatosis patients, we find a very good result with a five-year overall survival rate, which was uh, um, uh, almost 90%, and the five-year cancer-related survival with 97%. This is uh, the first multicenter European study uh, which was published in 2012. But when we look at, when we talk about robotic major lung resection, especially for lung cancer treatment, where do we stand? This is a still considered a challenging operation, a challenging, uh, really uh, challenging uh, under many points of view. And, and this is, uh, if we consider uh, uh, the literature in the world, uh, except uh, the uh, Copenhagen, uh, and uh, that is, is a very uh, amazing experience. If we consider that uh, in the world, we find that uh, uh, still now, over 70% of stage one lung cancer still are being performed by open technique, and if we look at the data taken from the, um, taken from the uh, uh, STS, the Society, Thoracic Society uh, uh, of American, uh, the database uh, uh, shown that only 45% of lobectomy are being performed by bats. So we can understand why this uh, procedure is still considered a, ch a challenging procedure, sorry. Probably this is related to some technical difficulties. Um, all we know that with the VATS we can have uh, some difficulties in related to, to the two-dimensional vision and steady camera platform and the limited maneuverability, which uh, implies a limited dexterity sometime due to the hands and uh, the wrist outside the patients the fixed instrument tips, and this is a really influence, can uh, influence some difficulties. However, if we look at the literature specifically in robotic surgery and specifically uh, in the field of lung cancer treatment, we find a very few papers. This is a systematic review, a meta-analysis on pulmonary resection, which was published uh, on 2012 in Annals Cardiothoracic Surgery. As you can see, 393 records were analyzed five, uh, through five uh, uh, electronic databases, but only nine uh, papers were identified and were judged as relevant. So uh, the comparative outcomes were analyzed, so the perioperative morbidity, mortality, conversion rate, and so were analyzed. 
And uh, in this slide, I summarize that um, this is uh, the uh, centers uh, and uh, the authors uh, which, uh, who were considered uh, consistent uh, in terms of uh, the long-term results. As you can see, the perioperative outcome, uh, uh, when we look at that, these results, we find that the perioperative mortality ranged from 0.23.8%, the overall morbidity 10 to 39%, the major morbidity 0 to 5%. And again, when we look at that conversion rate, we find uh, uh, ranging from 0 to 19.2%, the operating time, one hour and a half, two hour and a half. The median length of stay ranged from two uh, days to uh, uh, 11 days, and the duration chest drainage, 1.5 day, seven days. Uh, if we look at the overall five survival rate, we find a 63.6% to 8%, and the overall recurrences, including local, systemic, and both local and systemic recurrence ranged from zero to 90.8%. So these results we can consider uh, positive in some way, and this uh, suggests that the robot surgery is uh, feasible and can be performed safely in a specialized centers. However, when we look at, uh, and if we look at uh, the results in terms of uh, compared with uh, the uh, review on uh, a video assisted thoracoscopy, we find that the perioperative outcome, including uh, postoperative complication, were really similar to the historical count of conventional VATs, except if we consider the case volume. However, what is the really, really the role of robotic surgery, especially when compared with the VATs technique? We don't have uh, many uh, papers. This is a, the only paper that I found in the literature. It's a paper published by uh, Michael Kent uh, last year on thoracic, on anal thoracic surgery. In this paper, uh, the data uh, taken from uh, um, uh, um, uh, state inpatient databases uh, in a period between 2008 and 2010, and the data came from eight different states in the U.S., as you can see, over the years. Uh, we find that the thoracotomy decreased, that the VATs decreased, well, I don't know why, but, and in some way the robotic increased, although also uh, in 1.3%. But interestingly, when we look at uh, uh, results, we find that the VATs resection were associated with the decreased mortality a rate of uh, pneumonia and uh, the length of stay when compared with the open thoracotomy uh, was a little bit, uh, was uh, decreased. And when compared to the robotic pulmonary resection uh, with uh, the VATS, we find that a reduction in mortality and length of stay uh, also in this case, although in uh, an unmatched analysis. Interestingly, in uh, this paper, uh, the propensity matched analysis only for patients undergoing a surgery for high volume surgeons, uh, we find that the robotic lobectomy was associated with a statistically significant reduction in mortality when compared with the VATS lobectomy. And again, if we look at, at uh, narcotic use, we find that uh, uh, very good results in favor of uh, the um, uh, robot procedure, but uh, in a period uh, uh, a little bit far, the perioperative uh, uh, period compared to, uh, if we compare this with uh, the VATS uh, uh, series. Again, uh, regarding the learning curve, uh, here are uh, uh, listed some papers which clearly uh, demonstrated a more rapid uh, uh, learning curve uh, with robotic surgery than VATS surgery. However, this is uh, just a very few data that we have. So uh, 
it is really the real role of robot surgery compared with the VATS remains to be really uh, important, to, to be demonstrated. Uh, as I told you at the beginning of my presentation, uh, my experience started many years ago, in 2001. It was just that I was lucky in some way because uh, I work in a cardiothoracic department. At that time, the, the, the robot, the system, was bought for cardiac surgeons. And they, I was uh, really lucky, they abandoned this uh, system. So I tried to apply to find an application of this system, especially focusing on uh, uh, major lung resection. So since then, I performed more than, at the moment we performed more, uh, we, we uh, performed uh, more than 600 uh, uh, major lung resections. And um, it mainly concentrated in a period between uh, 2004, 2000 uh, uh, to, 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 to date. And uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, as I told you, there was uh, no uh, indication, there was uh, no uh, publication, there was no address. So I tried to apply the a technique which was uh, almost similar to the VATS procedure. And uh, over the years, uh, with, the, uh, with the upgrades of the system and with the uh, improvement of technique, my technique was changed. So today is a complete port for arms uh, uh, with the CO2 insufflations. And this is uh, just to give you an idea of uh, the um, possible uh, uh, procedure that uh, we can do. Uh, as you can see, the lobectomy, the, the robotic lobectomy follows uh, the standard surgical steps of open surgery. As you can see, I use it a different, uh, uh, different technique. I use the stapler, of course, but also I apply the ligation um, uh, uh, procedure, uh, ligation uh, technique, uh, and the clips. So uh, this uh, to demonstrate that uh, it's possible to perform uh, um, all things uh, uh, due to the very nice uh, uh, articulation that we can have with this instrument. And especially, we have a very uh, nice vision uh, which allows uh, to perform a very complex procedure. In these cases, these were a very simple procedure, uh, all uh, um, stage one patients. With the improvement and the increasing number, uh, we moved uh, the increasing increase the, the indications in these cases uh, uh, in these cases uh, it was uh, um, a neoadjuvant chemotherapy it was at the beginning of my uh, um, experience and uh, as you have seen there was a small, small incision at the beginning because it was uh, um, a more similar similar to the vats in these cases uh, is a very big, um, very big lesion in the middle lobe, but in both cases it's really, really easy to perform this procedure thanks to the vision. Unfortunately, it is not possible to show you the real vision that we have uh, inside because uh, uh, the, the three-dimensional, the, the, the depth perception helps a lot uh, in dissecting uh, the structures and especially in, uh, to, in performing uh, very um, complex uh, maneuvers. It is clear that the lymphadenectomy is uh, absolutely um, possible and very easy to perform. Uh, we respect uh, the guidelines, uh, as you can see, uh, so um, we, we, we follow uh, the normal guidelines. Uh, there is uh, no problem in uh, dissecting these uh, um, structures. Uh, here we have uh, the vena cava and the azygos. As you can see, it's very easy to um, uh, surround the, the azygos uh, vein or uh, to uh, to dissect it in a very 
uh, clean away all uh, the lymph nodes. And again, I wanted to show you some challenges that we can have during uh, uh, this procedure. In this case, it was during uh, um, and how it's possible to solve the problem uh, thanks to this, uh, the features of the system. As you can see, in this case, it was the uh, ligament and the uh, lower vein was, um, less, was in some way <laughs> Uh, uh, lacerated with uh, the hook, but it was possible uh, to solve the problem. Uh, and again, in this case, uh, it was um, during uh, um, the lingulectomy and during uh, this procedure, uh, it was my fall. Um, the gauze uh, uh, slept off uh, the clip, but uh, in both cases, it was possible to uh, solve the problem thanks to the, the, the articulation and the nice articulation and uh, the very nice vision. As you can see, in this case, I applied the, the vascular clamp and then I moved it to the console to continue the procedure uh, by uh, robotic uh, surgery. So what about my results? Uh, here there is a... Um, 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 a little mistake. Uh, we have a more. Uh, we have a 12 patients uh, with, uh, who were converted, but just not for uh, um, for uh, for uh, um, uh, emergency. But just because uh, uh, we find uh, um, at the beginning, especially of uh, my experience, uh, we find uh, uh, very calcified lymph nodes. There's some very. Um, uh, thick, um, thick adhesions, so we decided to convert. As you can see, the operating time was uh, almost uh, uh, two hours, uh, and uh, the um, consumption of morphine, it was very low. The chest tube drainage uh, the, was a 2.1, and the hospital stay 3.5. It is clear that all these results uh, are related to very good risk patients, and I want to stress this point. Uh, uh, I'm moving in a very more complex procedure, but at the beginning I wanted to uh, apply this technique in a very uh, nice selected patients. And again, when we look at, at the survival, we find uh, um, only for uh, uh, the stage one patient, 89%. Uh, after a median follow-up of five years. If we look at uh, th this, these uh, data are very similar, uh, largest series which was uh, uh, published in cooperation on 2012 for in cooperation with the Memorial Slow Catering and with uh, the European Institute of Oncology in Milan. As you can see, the perioperative results are similar to my uh, uh, my series, and again, when we look at, uh, at uh, uh, survival, especially the stage-specific survival, is uh, almost similar, uh, and especially for the stage one. So what, what about uh, the critical points? Uh, many colleagues, many surgeons say that the critical point for uh, uh, robotic surgery is uh, the feedback. We don't have feedback, this is true. And the large size, the uh, cumbersome of the system. In my opinion, and thanks to the experience, both this critical point can be overcome. What is uh, still remain, remains a really critical point are the costs. What about my experience? The costs, uh, you know, how related the capital, the service contract, the equipment, uh, above all. What about uh, the experience in Pisa? Uh, uh, my center is a multi-speciality center, which means that all the speciality uh, will, there is a, a, um, a centralization. In other words, is a, a similar organization that uh, uh, Professor Peterson uh, shown before. As you can see, this is, a, uh, is a not very clear, but as you can see, this is a, the all kind of procedure that uh, uh, have been performed in, uh, in our center. So all the costs were analyzed in terms of uh, 
medical advice, diagnostic test, hospital stay drugs, uh, robot instrument, other costs. This is uh, the costs and the different color give you an idea, the different costs as you can see at the beginning. The hospital stay influenced a lot uh, the, because we were not really confident with this new procedure. So after analyzing this the, 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 this, uh, all the costs, this is a publication on 2013, and as you can see, uh, we, um, uh, we uh, analyzed the total direct cost and the not indirect cost. Uh, and as you can see, there is a very important gap in, uh, in terms of cost between uh, the robotic open and laparoscopic, and especially between uh, the robotic and the laparoscopic procedures, thoracoscopic, sorry, because uh, uh, the uh, engineer brought this uh, laparoscopic in general. And so uh, analyzing this cost, so we try to apply a strategy just to decrease the, the cost and to have a sustainability of this uh, uh, system. So the strategy was, uh, especially, of course, uh, the multidisciplinary use of the robot, just to reach a very high volume, so the centralization, the complex procedure, we don't apply this uh, uh, system for pneumothorax, for example. A dedicated robotic team training uh, uh, surgeons and especially standard design, standard, standardizing the procedures. As you can see, this is uh, uh, the increasing number that we have over the years when we started with the program, especially from 2012 today. And so more than all, uh, at this point, we are almost uh, more than 4,000 uh, procedures. This is uh, the increasing number with, uh, as you can see, all the procedures are high complexity procedures. More than 75% uh, have high CM. And when we look at the robotic lobectomy, we find that when we started, this was uh, the, uh, total cost was more, almost 13,000, uh, more than 12,000 of uh, euros uh, with a gap of uh, uh, almost 3,000. Today we have uh, less than 560 euros uh, compared with the open surgery, which is clearly evident in this curve. So what is my conclusion is that it is clear that the retrospective series indicates that the robotic surgery for lung cancer offers comparable radicality and safety to conventional surgery. However, prospective randomized trials are required, of course. And again, what I wanted to stress is that major lung resection is, a, of course, a challenging operation, but especially when applied in the hands of a not skilled surgeon with low case volume. This is a very important point. And again, when we look at, at uh, capital cost, it is clear that the high capital and the running cost can be important disadvantages, and especially if uh, this system, this uh, uh, procedure is applied only occasionally in low volume hospitals, and again, I would like to uh, say that the future direction includes, uh, of course, further refinement of the technique. So we are waiting uh, for new device, for new stapling, and uh, other uh, improvement. Thank you for your attention.